time, let's do something real quick. Somebody came up with this very, very great idea. This is solid youth, you know, and it's our youth Sunday. So let's clap it up for that. It's good. So I see my youth, they're all sitting like on this side and they're filling up that row or this section over here. So I want to ask something. Can we actually have the adults move over to this side? if that's okay. I see my sister over there looking. She's like, you talking to me? I don't even know well. I like my seat. This seat is comfortable. Got it warm. Oh, she needed some hot chocolate. Praise God. Praise God. So while they're uh, moving over to that side, let's stand to our feet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Father, we bless you, oh God. We thank you, oh Lord, for um, just being so gracious. Uh, uh, just just for being God. We, we thank you because you are uh, the sovereign God. We thank you, you are the holy God. Father, you are the Holy One. And Father, we love you on today. Zion, lift up your voice and talk to him. Lift up your voice and talk to him. Even if it's, thank you, Jesus. If you don't know what to say, just say, yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Father, we honor you on today, oh Lord. Father, we take this time to worship you, Father, to magnify you. Father, you are king. You are the only king. Lord, you are the uncreated one. So sovereign, oh God. There's no one like you, God. In all of creation, there is none like you. And we bless you, oh God. We thank you. Oh, Lord, Father, and we just invite you in this presence. Someone just lift your, your hands up in here. We thank you, Lord. We invite you in this place, oh, Lord. Yeah, God, we surrender to you, God. We surrender our wills unto you, oh, Lord. We surrender our wills unto you, Father. We belong to you. You are our Lord, and we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. 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 Father, we don't come here to rush anything, oh Lord. <laughs> But Lord, we take this time to bless you, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. We, your people, we say thank you, Lord. Because if it had not been for you on our side, Father, we would be somewhere else, O oh God, Father. Some of us would, wouldn't be in our right minds, O oh God. But Lord, you have brought us from a mighty long way, O oh God. And we honor you, O oh Lord. We thank you for your benefits, oh God. There it is, there it is. Somebody just catch that wave, catch that wave of worship. Catch that wave of his presence. Catch that wave of his presence. We bless you, Jesus. With uplifted hands, Father, we honor you on today, oh God. We cast our crowns down, Father, at your feet. Holy God, holy, 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 O oh Lord, holy, O oh Lord, holy, O oh God. We cry, holy, O oh God. We cry, holy, O oh God. We cry, holy, O oh God. Holy, O oh God. We bless you, O oh God. And we thank you. Somebody give the Lord a hand praise. Not just because I said it. 
even though I said it, but just give God a hand praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God. Well, listen, are you all excited? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's make some noise. Are you all excited? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, listen, I, I got somebody that's going to help me out. <laughs> He's actually um, in training. And um, he asked me, he said, uh, he was like, uh, Theo, can, can, I, can, I, uh, can I be up there with you? And I was like, sure, you can do the whole thing if you want to. But this young man, uh, he actually, <laughs> he wanted me to introduce him. So, you know, sometimes you just, you know, when you, it's your first time, you kind of, you know, kind of just be doing, you know, uh, the most, you know, and uh, I appreciate it. Tutu, you ready? Uh, Y'all listen, let's put your hands together for you, you, Mr. Jaden as he comes. Come on, sing it. You ready? Am I ready? Are you ready? Yes, I am. You didn't even give me time to introduce you. That's how that's how excited she was. You just you just came and just burst in and was just like, y'all ready? So what you gotta say? What you gotta say? What you gotta say? What you gotta say? We are glad for you to come today. Um, and praise and worship, leading on with Nasha coming in. This is what we're doing. <laughs> so you came in, you burst in, you was just like, hey, y'all, hey, y'all. Any greetings? You want to greet anyone that's, that's here? Some, some people that's, you know, you want to greet someone? Yes. Then go ahead and greet. Go ahead. My grandma. <laughs> okay, your grandma. We know her as Pastor L, y'all. So come on. Oh. Who else? Who else? He, he's, not, he's not in the building, though, but who else? My Uncle Bud back. <laughs> okay, I'll, he said, Uncle Buddy. He said, You want to greet Uncle Buddy? He said, Hey, deuces, man. Who else? Who else? Man. He about to come through that door right now. And if he don't hear you, Lord Papa. Jesus. <laughs> he said, it's, Thank you. <laughs> Let's give it up for bishops. We thank God for Pastor L and Bishop, the angels of this house. So listen, we are going to actually have our welcome. Uh, you can be seated. You are going to have our welcome by uh, Mr. Nasha, and followed by that, we are going to have our praise and worship, all right? So let's continue in the spirit of the Lord. And come on, Nasha, where you at? There you go. Y'all, right. he got on a full suit for this thing. Bless. You're looking good, brother. Come on. That's two, that's two. One, two, one, two. Are we good here? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Nasha Ushugumai, and welcome to the youth service. Thank you. To be honest, when I first actually was asked to welcome here, I actually couldn't really believe it. I was like, should I really do this? Should I actually be able to come to that? But I knew that it was actually my call. So then I actually volunteered to open a prayer, and I was like, oh, man, what did I got myself into? <laughs> but at the same time, I was nervous, though, but I was, like, happy that I get to be here today, like, welcoming everybody and sharing you all what God has planned for us. And I'm happy to exactly show you guys exactly what he has done for all of us. Happy that every one of you here is here today because you guys choose to be here. And I'm happy you guys made the choice. And so, as the praise team comes up, I would like for you guys to exactly put your hands up and just thank the Lord today and thank you for what he's done for your life. Lord Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray to you that you have set us up here tonight, Lord Jesus. We pray for this service that you will lift us and you will flow through us, Lord Jesus. We pray to you, you anoint us, every one of us in this building today. We pray to 
Father, we give you honor, glory, and all the honor, and all the praise. Yes, you know, Lord. A mighty word in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's begin to worship God right there. That was one of our youth that got up here and said, let's worship God, yet we're still sitting down, huh? Well, God, we worship you. God, there's nobody like you. Can we get on our, our feet and worship God? I know this is praise and worship, but the meaning of praise and worship is not singing, right? So I know that this is the part where songs are sung, but praise and worship actually is what we owe God. So praise is response to what God has done to, for us, right? So when somebody gives you something, what do you say? Right, so he woke you up this morning. What do you say? Thank you. He started you on your way. You say? Thank you. He let you make it here safely. What did you say? Thank you. You're here in your right mind. What do you say? Thank you. you got a reasonable portion of health. What do you say? Thank you. Listen, if you're able to hear me, what do you say? Thank you. If you're able to see me, what do you say? Thank you. All right, now if you can say thank you, now you begin to tell him what he means to you. Right? So worship is relationship. So worship says that God, even if you don't do these things, I still know who you are. And because of that, you're still worthy of it. So even though I may have pain in my body, I still worship you. Even though my bank account is not reflecting what I needed to do, I'm still going to worship you. Even though my grades may not be what they are supposed to and I've been studying, I'm still going to give you all, all the glory and all the honor. Right? So let me teach you about praise and worship before we begin. It's not a song. Praise and worship is a lifestyle. Hallelujah. Praise and worship is an action, yeah. right? So when we're up here singing songs that say things change when we call on the name of Jesus and we're standing there, I don't think that you believe it, right? So there are different responses to praise and worship, okay? You can lift your hands. You can clap your hands. You can jump, you can run, you can get out of your seat. Whatever the Lord leads you to do, please feel comfortable this morning in doing that. All right, take the limits off. Take the, we're not doing that. Take the limits off. We got on jeans and sweatshirts and hoodies and can we just worship God freely today? Can we just worship God freely today? And, and, and adults, I challenge you to not let the kids out worship you this morning. Hallelujah. Now let's worship God right there. Come on. Open your mouth. Woo! Come on, let's clap your hands. There is power in the name of Jesus. 
so much power in your name and there is power in the name come on do you believe that this morning sing there is power in the name hey, oh. sing there is power sing the praise when we call you see things change when sing oh see things change now make it personal say I'm free praise the Lord I'm free worshiping our youth are saying when they call on the name of Jesus they realize and understand that things have got to change the name of the Lord is a strong tower the Bible says train up a child in the way that he or she should go and when they are old they will not depart from it and if we teach them now to call on the name of Jesus who can stand before th thank you Jesus hallelujah Listen, I get excited when I see our youth being able to worship and express themselves. Hallelujah. We're so quick to jump on them when they're doing things they ain't got no business to do. But when they're up here worshiping God, we should be able to celebrate them. Hallelujah. They're talking about calling on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! All right, so I, I taught you a little, bit about, a little bit about praise and worship, right? So this next song is literally praise and worship. All you're going to do is respond accordingly, okay? You'll repeat after me. What is the highest praise? Hallelujah. 
I need you to say it like you mean it now, right? So what is the highest praise? Hallelujah. Come on. There we are. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, you can keep worshiping. You don't have to wait for the music to stop. If he's been good, he doesn't wait for you. He just does. Hallelujah.
in our homes, in our lives. Lord, we need you. When nothing else to say. streaming down my face I gotta sing hallelujah hallelujah body is wrecking with pain I still sing hallelujah I have no peace in my mind but I still gotta do a hallelujah the doctor may have given you a bad report but you still gotta sing No matter what's going on in your life, God is still worthy. So we sing. And sing, Lord, we need you. Nobody else but you, God. We need you in our lives. We need you in our home. Sing, Lord, we Right here, let's worship one more time. Open up your mouth. Let him know what he's been to you. We thank you for being a provider. We thank you for being a sustainer. We thank you for being a protector. God, we thank you for being peace. We thank you for being comfort. Thank you for healing our hearts, God. Thank you for removing depression. Thank you for lifting anxiety. For there's no one like you. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. You got to think about it. There is nobody, 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 nobody. People threw you away, but there's no one like you. He understands your tears. There's no one like you. We sing hallelujah. We sing There's no one like you. There is no one like you. Now, if you know there's no one like him, now give him a praise that he deserves. A praise that only he can receive. Because there's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one, no one understands like he understands. No one understands the tears. No one understands, hallelujah, there's nobody like you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we worship him one more time? Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, let's stay right there, stay right there. Let's continue to worship, let's continue to worship. Let's continue to worship. Let's continue to worship. Father, no one like you, oh God. Yeah, no one like you, oh Jesus. No one like you, Jesus. One more time, can we lift up our hands and just, and just tell them, just say, no one like him. That's a cool clap, but can we lift up our hands, though? Can we just lift up our hands? Can we lift up our hands?
Father, we thank you. Just give them glory. Young people, just give them glory all over the house. Give them glory. Just give them glory. The Father is stirring up something in the earth. And he's calling people, his people too, back to him and back to his presence. He's calling us to a place in, of higher, higher in him, higher just to worship, higher just to honor him. And if sometimes we can just take time just to say, you know what, Lord, we just bless you, we honor you. Father, on today, we don't just come to church just to get it over with. But if we just dare just to say, you know what, God, we just take this time to worship you. We take this time to honor you, oh God. So we worship you, dear Jesus. We worship you, dear Jesus. We worship you, oh God. Let's just honor God in his presence. Sing your own song to him. Lift up your voice and sing your own song. If you would just worship God past your circumstance, I promise you everything will be all right. 
I promise you everything will be all right. We bless you, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we honor you, we honor you, we honor you, Lord. You're so holy, so holy, so holy. So holy. Yeah, yeah. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, O oh God. We bless you, O oh God. We bless you. In your hearts, and some of your hearts is burning, and there's a call that God is saying, Come closer. Come closer. Ah, come closer. Yeah, Lord. Listen to the Lord. Father, we bless you. We bless you, Jesus. Holy, oh God. Come on, young folk. Lift up your hands just real quick. And just tell God, yeah. Just tell him, yeah. 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 How you know how. Tell him, yeah. Yeah, God, yeah, God. Where you at? Right here. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. church said amen. Let's honor God with a hand clap one more. Hallelujah. You may be seated. to God, I said, I said, Lord, I said, um, in this time of my life, um, at times I would self-sabotage, you know, I would get close to a breakthrough and then I would get afraid and I would kind of go back to what's familiar. But I told God, I said, Lord, this time, I said, I just want you and the father spoke back to me. He said, cling to me. But then I also promised him, I said, Lord, I said, I promise this time around I'll keep young folk close to me. I said, I'm not going to push away or just say, hey, it's about me. Or just try to do my own thing. But I told the Lord, I said, I, I recognize what you called me to do. And Lord, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep this generation close and I promise you I'll point them towards you. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? See, it's not our job to make men like us. But it's our job to point men to Christ. So, 
If I make them like me, they're going to fall all the time. <laughs> but if I point them towards Christ, then they'll be more than conquerors. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah? If you know what I'm talking about, say yes, sir. Hey, man, hey, man, y'all talking to God, not me. I ain't going to lie, sorry. Hey, man, listen, what you doing? You turn around, you like, it's all over you. It was like, let me just turn around and just say thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, listen, at this time, we are going to have, who we got next? Lyric, you want to say it? We have Lyric Hamilton. What's she going to do? She is a youth speaker. Hold on, because they got a clapping spirit on them, so... <laughs> So what they gonna do? What she gonna do? She. I need you to say it loud though. So matter of fact, I need you to hold this. Stand right here. All right. There you go. And what she gonna introduce it? And what she gonna do? We are introducing Lyric Hamilton, and she is speaking about solid. Good morning, everybody. My name is Lyric Hamilton. Um, I'm going to be speaking about how much I, how much I spend time with Jesus, especially when I am like down sometimes and like sad. But meaningful, I'm really going to be talking about um, these kids right here that's sitting in the front. So the experience I have with them, like they can help you when you need help the most, and sometimes they're there when you need when you need someone to talk to but when but you really have Jesus to talk to so I guess that's like another opportunity to reach out with other people so sometimes I like to talk to people about my wow I feel like I listen to people conversation but when I'm in like a mood um sometimes I pray to Jesus and ask him I won't, I don't want to die this time. I don't want to die, and I want to, I want to stay here a little bit longer. Some kids like, um, some kids die early, so I'm trying to make sure I'm still going to stay alive for a little bit. Some some people like don't follow their parents' wishes or ob don't obey, but I've seen people die before and heard, and I don't want that life to be like me. So I've been trying my hardest to obey my parents and listen because I don't want my life to be taken away. Jesus don't promise the Jesus don't promise that we stay a little bit longer, but I really hope I do. Come on, let's give her a hand. She said she doesn't want to be like them. They'll, they she wants to live a little bit longer. The Bible says, "Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right, and that your days may be." There it is. So she's speaking Bible. For those that did not know. All right. So let's give it up one more time for Lyric. Come on. Let's encourage her. When our kids have a mind not to serve God, but also to do right by their parents. When there are so many kids out here terrorizing their parents. She said, I want to do right. I want to live long. And if we can get her, if she's being an example at this age, some of us need to check ourselves. Huh? Huh? Hallelujah. Come on, give it up one more time for Lyric. All right, now we're going to move into the time where everybody can participate. Amen? Y'all was real dry. This is the part that everybody can participate. Amen? All right. So this is our time. We're going to do offering, tithes and offering. And I'm going to ask our youth that are doing that if they would come up. Our youth ushers are coming so they can get you envelopes. If you need an envelope, by the lifting of your hands, they will get it to you swiftly. Hallelujah. While we are doing that, our youth musicians 
are going to bless you with a selection. Now listen, I know that we're used to coming to church and looking, it's supposed to look and sound a certain way. Throw that out. That ain't today. That ain't today. Actually, you should throw it out every Sunday, but it really ain't today. Right? So, when a young person gets up here, it's already hard enough for us as adults to stand up here. Because y'all be looking real dry sometimes. Okay, I'm going to say it. <laughs> right. But for a youth to get up here and still be able to speak with such boldness and such conviction, we should be on our feet every time a youth touches this microphone and every time they display their gifts. We're so quick to, to chastise them and get on them about knowing lyrics to all these other songs. But they was up here singing two whole songs of praise and worship. And not only that, they begin to worship as they sang it. We were in sound check, and even in sound check, they were worshiping. I am so grateful for the opportunity to be able to see this with my own eyes. We have one, two, three rows full of young people. Full of young people. That in itself should be enough to worship God. They could be anywhere else. We don't have to lay a casket out here and cry because we didn't do what we were supposed to more. We, they are here in the house of the Lord because they want to be. And even if they didn't, they're here participating. Maybe if we were explain things to them about God and who God is and what praise and worship is, they would be a little bit more apt to participate. Sometimes we get so busy in worship because we've grown up in church and we we're just so used to it that we skip over the young ones and even the ones that are babies in Christ and we don't explain why we do what we do. Praise and worship is not a song. Praise and worship is a lifestyle. And that's what we are here to instill in our children is praise and worship. Because in those times when you feel like nobody else understands youth, Sometimes you feel like you can't talk to your parents. Sometimes you feel like you can't talk to your teachers. If you know that you can talk to God and he hears you, there is such a peace in knowing that. There is such a security in knowing that, especially in a time where there are so many people and so many youth dealing with depression and dealing with anxiety and dealing with suicidal thoughts. If we can just teach you who God is and that God hears you, specifically you, you matter. No matter what it is that you're dealing with, no matter what it is that you face, you matter to God. Even if it were just you, he would have still sent his son to die just specifically for you. Just for specifically for you. And I need you to understand that. So as we're doing this, uh, again, if you have debit... Um, you're paying by card. Minister Audrey is to my right, your left. You can see her. She will swipe your card. Um, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're just so excited for this opportunity. Um, can I teach you guys something real quick while we're doing this? Um, solid, if you don't mind helping me. I know who I am. I'm sorry. I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know the potential I possess. I know how I'll get there. I know how I'll get there. These are the four affirmations that we are teaching our young people. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna, I'll do it one more time. Can y'all do it with us? All right. It says, I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know the potential I possess. I know how I'll get there. So we want to teach our kids who they are. Not who society says they are. Not who some of these teachers tell them who they are. And not even who some of their family members tell them who they are. But we're teaching them who God says they are. Now when we know who we are, we know where we're going. So many of our young people are lost because they don't know who they are. And so because they don't know who they are, they don't know where they're going. And I need them to understand they know the potential that they possess. Potential is untapped power. 
That is your superpower. So if you can say, I know the potential, I know the superpower I possess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How powerful is that? And I know how I'll get there. God, we worship you. Father, we thank you, O Lord, for those that gave. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the seed. And Father, we thank you even for multiplying it, O God. Father, we bless you and we thank you, O God. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Amen. I don't know where they going. Where y'all going? You and, uh, you and Rachel need to come on back out here. See, Romney's the type of person where he just, he'll say what he got to say and he'll be like, okay, I'm done. Take a break. You know, but uh, don't be leaving me out here alone. I'm already nervous. Can y'all tell? I'm nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm shaking in my boots. <laughs> Is it? Oh. Right, right here? Oh, yes. I can tell it sounds better. <laughs> yeah. This mic. Okay. Can y'all hear me now? Good? Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Okay. Um, so this is uh, what we're here to do is um, talk about uh, an award that we actually came up uh, while we were uh, actually meeting, and this award, actually, no, I was gonna call you up, Tish, but you, you with Jaira, I know, I know, you know, Jaira might jump out that car seat and start walking. So, um, but while we all were meeting, um, uh, me, Romney, uh, Rachel, our wonderful youth president, let's give it up for her. And listen. We doing all the talking because Rachel don't like to talk. So we be trying to push it. We be trying to push it to her and she'd be like, nope, y'all say everything. So when I tell you that, I'm like, seriously nervous. I'm like, man, okay. <laughs> we done yet? No. Okay. No, but um, this uh, award is actually uh, called the I See You Award. And what I am going to do is, because uh, we actually elaborated on I'm going to ask Miss Rachel to actually talk about it even more. Okay. All right, so this award goes to a very, all of our youth are special. Um, and so this morning, we just wanted to take this time to honor one of our youth. Um, I know since I've been with Silent, he's been there over here on, at New Birth at the 1234 William Moss Boulevard. And I believe he was 10 years old when he first joined Silent. And um, very unique, very special, um, as all of our children are. And this morning, we just really wanted to take this time to honor um, him because I know I'm not a guy, but I know growing up as an African American black male, it could be kind of it could be challenging. And so, but he's continued to stand not just here in New Birth Christian Center, but even out in the community, he's known um, for his character. And so, on this morning, we just really wanted to take this time to honor him. And so, if you can just um, put your hands together um, for Elijah as he comes up here. We just wanted to present this word to you. I see you award. We love you. And we know that there is greater ahead. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Solid is really special to me. You know, as Rachel said, I've been attending Solid since I was 10 years old. It's, it's where you can open up and socialize with people in your age range, you know, and it's just very special to me. Amen. He didn't know that we were doing this, so he's, I know he's like surprised, but we really wanted to take this time to honor you. And he's, he's our oldest, our oldest male youth. All right. So you're 16, 17, 17. All right. So he's on his way. So thank you so much, Elijah. We love you. Wait, 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 before you go. Because we don't just want to honor you with, right, with, with our right. mouths. We want to honor you with money. Yes. Don't spend it all in one place. I, we just had an offering. You want to put that back in? <laughs> Come on, let's give him a hand. We want to be able to honor our youth. Amen.
Let's put our hands together for Mr. Elijah again. And man, and while I'm actually up here, I do want to um, actually encourage you all, parents that have youth, please bring them out to to Solid. It will be on the second and fourth Sundays. Okay, so please bring them out. We having fun. Um, we they learning about God. They learning about who they are in Christ. Amen. So please, we encourage you. Bring them out. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, "Bring your youth out." Now, if you ain't got no kids, you know, just, you know, it's, it's okay. You know, uh, you can just, you know, find someone, you know, like in the neighborhood and say, hey, I know a great place for your youth if you know someone with kids and all that. So, but, but yeah, please bring them, bring them out. But what I want you to do is the parents, I want you to just clap your hands for yourselves just for bringing them out to this. So put your hands together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, at this time, we actually have the brother of Lyric, and he's going to come, and he's going to have words, and he's going to preach. He's going to preach his house down. He's going to start a revival. He's going to go outside, and he's going like, to be like, come to Jesus, you know, and then they're going to make him a TV evangelist, you know, all that stuff. You know, he's just going to be doing great things. You know, we all going to be like, I know him, I know him. Okay, no, but uh, let's put our hands together for Mr. Leo Hamilton. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, sis, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, I know you too, Dave. Thank you. Um, what I want to say is, um, I'm thankful for God for giving me everything, giving me like life. And I've been talking to them about like how I get angry or get a little sad. Uh, but I thank him for, you know, everything, what he done for me for like school. I could sometimes get down in school, like, like all, all like so many different stuff. I think about, and um, well, I helped my father um, make um, like different machines, like bikes that we just made, and I thank him for giving me like other stuff for gifts, and um, I was going to apologize, I was going to say sorry for everything that I done, everything I did. And I um, just want to say thank you, Pastor. Um, you guys you guys made me feel like home. And um, I'm just so happy to be here. And thank you, too, for everything. You guys are the best. And um, thank you all you guys, me and your friends, family. This is great. And I'm happy f for me and all of you guys. So thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> and next, what we're going to bring to you at, with a poem Jeremiah Word. My poem solid. You can't move my spirit because I'm solid as a rock around my solid, around my solid family. Can't help but talk about being a solid because it's fun. Can't leave the lesson just begun. Come on and meet everyone. Somewhere calm and fine. Take time to unwind. Join along. When we're in solid, no one is left behind. And here you can find a peace of mind. I always say solid is cool. We call it solid because it's uh, because it's uh, no regular Sunday school. 
with kids that are cool and solid, we keep concentration. Our four affirmations. I know who I am. I know where I'm going. Going. I know the potential I possess. I know the potential I possess. I know how I'll get there. Thank you, everyone. means to me is family, uh, friends, and fun time, and uh, getting to hang out with uh, people that you enjoy. Okay. Um, what song means to me is hanging out with like people or new people you can get to know, and getting to know God more, and also to have fun. Um, solid means to me is Jesus about Jesus and Lord, how we get to connect with other people, especially when it's new people and we're connecting with Jesus at the moment. So. Solid to me means um, a group of youth that get together and not learn only about Christ, but learn about each other. Um, we up together and um, Sorry about that, Don. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry. Listen, we, we, we was talking about fried chicken that day, and I forgot that I caught a picture of Don with that, so. That's my bro, man. I'm sorry, Don. Sorry. Man, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. Ooh, he's smiling like, yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. I got you. Listen, can we please put our hands together for the youth one more time? <laughs> together, we make this happen. Together, we make this happen. We do. And I want to bring to you our youth advisor, uh, Ms. Fields, as she come and to have words. Amen. Come on. Come on up so everybody can see you. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. So Sister Rachel asked me to just share a few words. Um, I First and foremost, I just want to just start by saying um, thank you. Thank you to our pastor, pastor's wife. Um, we're just really grateful. Uh, my family and I are very grateful for this opportunity to be a part of of solid and, and, and the new birth family. Um, 
my son asked me, he saw my picture up there and he's like, why is your picture up there, mom? What are, what are you doing? So I just want to take a couple of minutes just to share. Um, Sister Rachel sent me, she sent me four questions. So bear with me they, as I go through these four questions um, as to introducing myself to the congregation and, um, and how I can be a part. So um, the first question she asked was, my experience working with, with young people. Um, I've been working with young people. That's all I know how to do. Um, I would love to have the gift of, of, of voice and singing and dancing, but I don't do any of that. So, um, you know, God gives us our own, our own gift and our own talent. And so um, I started in the field of education many years ago, um, started as a teacher I've uh, been in education for 20 years in Louisiana. Went to went to an HBCU, Dillard University. Um, yay! <laughs> uh, and so we, my husband and I, we lived there for 13 years. And then um, after the hurricane, Hurricane Katrina hit, we moved back home to California because I was born and raised in Stockton. Um, went through all Stockton Unified Schools. And so one of the things that I did not have when I was going up through the school system was I, I never had a black teacher. I never, I never had a teacher that looked like me. And so I always said, you know what, one day when I get the opportunity, I would love to come back. And so that is what I did for the most part. Um, been here now for, for a while, about 15 years, I want to say. Um, and then after coming out of the classroom, I wanted to, I thought that I could make a difference in the classroom for sure, but I thought I could make a difference working with young people and teachers um, as an administrator. So I've been an administrator for uh, about 16, about 16, um, no, a little over 12 years. I'm, I'm aging myself a little bit, so I'm gonna try not to do that. Um, and so I have been serving as an assistant principal. Um, raise your hand if you went to Rio Calaveras. Okay, so I'm going to talk about these kids really quickly that have their hands up. Um, and I was talking to Sister Jocelyn. I was kind of going to keep it to myself, but you know what? The Holy Spirit is just saying, no, you know, you, you, you need to share this. You need to share um, these beautiful young people. These beautiful young people are the reason why my family and I are here. You know, I, I have to say, um, and that is a reflection of their upbringing and a reflection of their family. And so I, I, I have to give honor where honor is due. Uh, these beautiful young people, they were different. They were really different from the other kids on the school campus. I was their assistant principal um, for, for a few years. And, you know, they, I saw a light in them. And, you know, when you are a, a person who um, believes in God, you, you recognize the light. You see the light. Um, also, and Sister Maisha's not here today. Maisha, um, Sister Maisha was also at uh, Rio Calaveras at the same time, and she's just a beautiful spirit. And I would think to myself, wow, you know, like, these children are different. I, I got to see, you know, what, what's going on at this new birth. And Benjamin would bring a flyer and say, Mrs. Fields, Mrs. Fields, uh, would you like to come to our event that we're having at my church? And he was little back then. So um, it's just, it's been really a real and true blessing to see how God is moving in their lives and to see, you know, to see him on the drums and, you know, the children just playing and doing their best, working in their gifts and talents and, and giving God the honor and the glory. And I'm just thankful to be a part of that. So um, long story short, I just appreciate the opportunity. Um, I did go on to become a principal, uh, serve for a few years, principal in Stockton Unified. Um, and then some things happen. And I know Sister Carmen, you gave a beautiful testimony last week and I was sitting there thinking to myself, wow, you know, that's just, just shows the reflection of how God moves in our lives. And so um, he, my testimony isn't finished yet. You know, he just, <laughs> he's just getting started. Um, some, some things happen um, that, you know, for whatever reason, the district, the school board asked me to not return. And so I, I did nothing wrong and I did not understand politics. I did not understand because some of the work that my parents, my parents are very active in the NAACP. 
And so because of some of the work that had been going on, I, I just, I never wanted to be a part of politics. I always tell my mom, I tell my parents, I don't like politics. I just want to go to work and do my job. And my mom would always tell me, okay, Rachel, that's fine. But just know you don't want to be a part of politics, but you, but you are. So just, just get over it. Um, and so the school board told me, you know, no, thank you. We, we, we have no work for you. Uh, and this was during COVID. This is right when COVID hit. And I was a principal at the time. And I just, I was devastated. I'll be honest. I was devastated. Um, so they said, no work for you. I, I did get another um, administrator job in another district. And then I realized I did not want to leave. I didn't want to leave Stockton Unified. That's the only school that I have been a part of. And so um, they said, well, if you stay, all you can do is teach. Okay. <laughs> so one thing about me is I am a teacher. One of the questions Sister Rachel asked is, you know, what is my passion? My passion is teaching. Um, however, I knew, I always knew I would go back to teaching, but I wanted to do it when I wanted to do it. I did not want to be told that you can't do this. You can't be a principal. You can't. And so they wanted to get me out. And it wasn't about me. It was 10 other African-American administrators that they had let go during, in the name of COVID, um, due to so-called budget cuts. So if you know anything about politics, you know how that goes. So I just decided to do it. I decided to get back in the classroom. I hadn't been a teacher in 15 years at the time, and it was hard. I have to tell you, it was hard only because I didn't realize that God was moving and helping me to see and learn a lesson. And so um, for the last two years, I have been a teacher in the classroom in Stockton and Fight over at Hamilton. I don't know if anybody went to Hamilton, but <laughs> Hamilton Hawk right here. Um, but I did it, and I, I did my best. I can't, I can't deny I was sad at times. And so, young people, I just want to tell you that there are going to be times when you don't want to do things, and you're wondering, why is God doing this? Why is he allowing this to happen to me? Because I, I, was, I was upset. I was angry. And I just want to know why. Why do I have to go through this? But then I started to turn it around and ask myself, why not me? Why not me? If not me, then, then who? You know, so I decided I'm going to do what they asked me to do. I'm going to fight it too, but I'm going to do it in a respectful way. And that's why I tell young people to always, always, everything in respect, always being respectful. Um, and so long story short, I'll be, let me wrap this up. Um, I got a call about three weeks ago. A superintendent calls me out of the blue. Mind you, I'm teaching at Hamilton, teaching my little first graders. You know, we were walking around. I kept a good attitude. You know, I was never, never had a bad attitude with the kids. I was upset with the adults, absolutely. But the children, every day, I had to go in there with a smile on my face and a song in my heart, and we would do our thing. And my children were watching me. My children were watching how I handled it. So about three weeks ago, I did get a phone call. Superintendent calls me on the phone. Um, well, if you know anything about Stock Unified, we've had superintendent after superintendent after superintendent. So the current superintendent, um, she called. She says, Mrs. Fields, um, I just want to find out if you would be interested. We really need some help over at Adams Elementary. Would you, would you? consider coming over there in an assistant principal position. And I said, of course, absolutely, you know. And so that is what I'm doing now. And that's why I say my, my, my story or my testimony isn't over. But um, thank you. But what I wanted to say is that the lesson, and I hope young people that you always ask yourself, what is the lesson? And I think that the lesson that I am learning, because it's not over yet, but the lesson that I am learning is that we have to keep a good attitude and, and do our best to still, day after day, what is it that I can do? Lord, what is it that I need to do to please you today? And so that is what I tried my best to do. Um, and now, so he has me on a new assignment. And so that's the lesson that I learned, is that he gives us all an assignment. Whether my assignment is running a school as the principal, working with students in the classroom, in that cafeteria, wiping tables down with the kitchen staff, 
do it with a good attitude and a good heart. And so um, I just hope that as you all, because I'm seeing the challenges that they have, I've only been out of, out of the loop. I've only been in the classroom for two years. But now that the students are after COVID, we have to pray. We have to pray for these children every day, the challenges that they are, are facing. In, in my first week, I've had to break up fights. Um, it, and, it, and, it's, and it's been hard, you know, because legally I'm, not, I'm supposed to just stand there and watch them fight. I'm not going to do that, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. I know my husband reminded me that I have to come home to my family too. So uh, I'm just going to do my best to um, always stay safe. But our children need our prayers, and they, they need our support. And so to wrap this up, I am just honored to be a part, and I'm, and I'm here to serve. I'm here to do whatever it is. I hope that I'll get to teach. I hope I'll get to, to train, um, whether it's the students, whether it's working with the staff. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a little information about who I am, and, and whatever I can do, I, I am here to do. So with that being said, Thank you, thank you. I'm super excited to be a part of SOLID and I look forward to working with all of you. Hey Amen, let's give it up for Sister Rachel Fields again. All right, I promise you, we are almost done. Y'all like, Lord, we ain't never been in church. They ain't even get to the sermon yet. Jesus. Okay, listen, this is what we're going to do real quick. So um, you heard Brother Romney say on the video that there might be something for you if you bring a guest, the young folk, those that bring the most guests. So I want to know, by the raising of your hands, who brought a guest? Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. So let's do Lyric. Lyric, how many guests did you bring with a loud, with a loud voice? How many guests? Stand up. Come on, stand up. You can't. You can. Everybody that came for Lyric, stand up. Yeah, that, that's how we'll do it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> We have a guest right there. So, is that is that uh is that one one guest? You can Your dad isn't included. He go here. That's just like Caleb a few weeks ago at that teach me how to play and pray. It was like uh, how many folk and he was started making up names. Uh, James Williams, uh, Donald Taylor. Uh, we went to school together. Uh, okay. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else had to handle him? Okay, Elijah. How many people did you bring? Stand up. How many people? What was that? Is that a zero or was that three? Okay. <laughs> well, wait. Can we count the sisters that? Because she used to go here. So can we? No, we can't count the sisters. So. So so you brought two then? Two. Okay. Okay. Nasha. How many? He, he, he got a point. I didn't think about that. That's, he stood up like, praise the Lord, everybody. I brought us uh, 17. Lord Jesus. <laughs> okay, did, did you bring somebody, though? No, you roll, you roll with the words. and Come on. Okay, who else? Who else? He brought two? That counts. <laughs> that, that counts. Guest or not, that counts. And in the house of God, we are all family. And the church said amen. Okay, listen, who else? Young man, young man. Come here. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I, I see him, I see him. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Brought your mom. Where's your mom at? Okay. Hey, mom. Hi, mom. Say it again. That does. <laughs> does that count? <laughs> so we have Elijah with two. We have Nasha with two. 
we have been with one because he brought Nasha. <laughs> okay. So hold on, hold on, hold on. So Dave, how many did you bring? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. You guys are all evangelists. Amen. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. You brought two people? Who are they? Your mom and your brother? <laughs> and you're, okay, so apparently they all didn't want to come, did they, you know, before. I brought my family. Uh. <laughs> and there's 27 of us. It's 27. And each one has eight different jobs. Yes. So be. Okay, actually, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. So I got a winner, I got a winner, I got a winner. So where's he at? Where's he at? Where's the phenomenal drummer at? That was here. All right, Ben, let's stand up. So that's our winner right there, y'all, Ben. Because let me tell you how this works. Let me tell you how this works so nobody won't get upset. Ben invited Nasha. And Nasha invited his parents. <laughs> to a certain degree, that works. <laughs> so that actually counts. But Nasha, because you brought your parents, we gonna bless you too, brother. Y'all thought y'all, y'all thought y'all was about to be upset at me, huh? No, 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 no. That wasn't gonna happen. I, I saw some of the side eyes, like, brother, that ain't right. That ain't right. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. No, no, you ain't rebuking me. <laughs> no. Okay, so Ben and Nasha, all, let's give a hand clap. And can we do this while we're acknowledging one more acknowledgement? Can we all just stand up and acknowledge our youth? Just clap our hands for the youth. Please, 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 please. We love you. You all are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're created by God. You are gifted. I speak that over you, that success will follow you everywhere you go along with goodness and mercy. In Jesus' name, I speak that over you. In Jesus' name. I almost felt something there. Lord, I'm serious. I almost felt something there. All right, y'all. So we're going to bring up... Uh, one of the greatest, <laughs> she said, don't do that. One of the greatest youth leaders in the Stockton area. <laughs> People look at all the times like, well, it's, I can't do this or I can't do this, but you got to look at the heart of the matter. And when you have a heart for God, man, that's greater than to me anything. So we thank God for Sister Rachel where she just came off of a, uh, an evangelism trip in, Congo, in, in Cabo, you know, where she ministered to a lot of people, you know. They was on this broken down boat, Lord Jesus bless them. They, man, it was only, the boat only had one paddle and they had to just get there, you know, the best way they can, you know. And she said, you know, for God I live and for God I die, we gonna get there, <laughs> you know. And she ministered, and the Lord brought her back. Amen. <laughs> sister Rachel is my sister and I, and we, we definitely love her, and we love her heart. Amen. Amen. So let's stand up and let's clap it up for our youth leader, Sister Rachel Ware, Dr. Rachel Ware. Okay, so while you're standing, what we're going to do really quick before you sit down is take your seats. We're going to just pray, all right? I know we opened up in prayer, but I just want to pray again. Is that okay? All right. So, God, we first come to you saying thank you. Thank you, God, for just your presence that's in this place. God, we thank you for being God. We thank you, Father, for having your way. God, we thank you for having just the most awesome youth ever. God, we know that this is just the beginning. God, we thank you, Father, God, for just the service, God, even as we move forward, God, that you get the glory. God, I ask right now that you speak through me, Lord Jesus. I, I, act, I acknowledge that 
I will be a willing vessel, God, to you um, to minister and encourage the hearts of your people, our youth. God, I say thank you. You have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can have your seats. Okay, so I know you all heard throughout the service um, our four affirmations. And so I wanted to just mention those again, um, if that's all right. And we want to do, do this as a crowd, as a congregation. Um, and so I wish I had the, word, had the affirmations up there, but that's all right. You just repeat after me. And it says, I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know the potential I possess. I know how I will get there. So do you really know who you are is my question. <laughs> so do you really know who you are? This morning what I'm going to be doing is talking about knowing who you are. And um, with these affirmations, the first one, it says, I know who I am. If you don't know who you are, it's hard to know where you're going. If you don't know who you are, it's hard to know the potential that you possess, right? So we want to get to a place where we know who we are. And I'll share a story with you regarding myself as we move further. But I will not be up here long at all, so I'm just letting y'all know. Um, but I am going to um, touch on what I do have. And so the three points that I will be touching on will be what makes you who you are and why does it matter to know who you are, what's so important about knowing who you are, and then what's next? How do I get to this place? All right? So the first, the first question, what makes you who you are? What makes me who I am? So your identity. Identity, in other words, is the unique things about you that tell you or set you apart. Okay, so it could be your personality, it could be um, your creativity, it could be your character strengths, um, it could be um, your interests, your values, your physical features. So, you know, even like my nose, my forehead, our chin, everything about you, your weight, your height, your size, all those things make up who you are. Your DNA, your genetics, all those things make up who you are, Jeremiah, make up who you are, David, make up who you are, Amaya, Riley, Kayla, all of who you are and you are unique. The Bible reminds us in Psalms 139, 13 through 14, it says we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made. He says for you, is, the writer said for you for me, my, for my innermost parts, you knit me together. That means he took time to put each of us together when we were in our mother's womb. And it said, I will give thanks to praise to you for I am fearfully, I'm wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Another scripture says in Jeremiah 1 and 5, it says this, before I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart. Isn't that amazing that God set each of you apart? And you are unique. So what is it about you that make you unique? My second point, why does it matter? Why is it so important to know who you are? It's easy, when you don't know who you are, it's easy to give into the pressures of life. It's easy to believe you are your feelings. It's easy to believe that you are your mistakes. It's easy to believe what people say who you are. And so I believe that God gets the glory, and I'm coming to this place where I believe this for real, for real, that God gets the glory out of our lives when we do live out our fullest potential, you know, and that when we walk in all those things that he's placed in us. And so that's what we want to do is we want God to get the glory out of each of our lives. So I want to talk to you about Gideon. Have you all heard about Gideon Who he, in the Bible? You heard a little about Gideon? So Gideon, you can read this in your own time, but Gideon um, judges, it's in Judges 6 through 7. I was doing some studying on him. Um, and he was a man and he was, who was chosen by God. He was a man that was chosen by God. Um, he was young. Some would call that he came from an inadequate family. So maybe he didn't have the status that 
many people thought he should have. He probably wasn't the popular one. He probably didn't have the money, you know, um, all the money that in the world. But this is this God chose Gideon to go and deliver his his people or his nation from the hand of their enemy. And so Gideon, he couldn't really understand why God chose him because of where he came from, because he was young. And, you know, I quoted the scripture, Jeremiah 1 and 5. It says, um, before you were formed in your mother's womb, God set you apart. So he knew you before, you know, mom and dad even knew you. And um, just like Gideon was chosen, so are you. You're chosen to do a great work, just like Gideon. Now, what's next? How do I get here, get to this place of knowing who I am? So I want to tell you a personal story about myself. I'm at a place where I am becoming my own, and I absolutely love it. For a long time, I did not like Rachel, okay? I didn't. But I'm at a place now where I love where I am. It doesn't mean I don't like what's going on around in my life, but I love who I'm becoming, you know? And so, um, and yes, sometimes it gets uncomfortable, you know, when you do become who you are because you realize you are different. Sometimes you do feel like you're by yourself, and we're not. We're not. But sometimes you feel that way. And... One of the things or a couple of things that it took me to get to this place and it's still taking me to get to this place is the help of the Lord, obviously, a community of people, loving people, and then personal investment. You guys are probably like, what is personal investment? Well, on this journey of becoming who God has called me, called you all to be, it's an investment because I had to take time and I'm still taking time to begin to speak the positive things over my life. What God says about me, I am a child of the king and I am loved by him and I am the apple of his eye and I am called, you know, and chosen. And so I had to begin to speak those things, and, I mean, and I'm still speaking those things. When I look in the mirror, when I'm by myself in my room, in the car, wherever, those are things that I have to do um, continuously. It's like a routine, just like when we get up and we brush our teeth and we wash our face until it becomes a part of our lifestyle, speaking those things that God has declared over our lives. And so that's what I had to do. Um, and another thing that I had to do was I had to invite God back into my personal space. And I had to spend time in his word and in prayer. And I began to create affirmations of my own. I have a, a whole lot of them in my phone that I look at. I even have reminders of uh, my affirmations because it's easy to forget, you know, especially when you are going through life especially when times are not the greatest, you know, it's easy to forget. It's easy to get lost in a crowd. You know, it's easy to feel, like I said, sometimes we can confuse our identity, who we are with um, our mistakes, our feelings. You know, some days I don't feel good about myself or about life, but I, you know, becoming who I am, I know who I am. You know, sometimes when I don't get the good grades, I didn't always get good grades, right? But, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm a failure just because I didn't, I failed the test. You know, we're more than conquerors. We're winners. We are victorious in him. And so you may not always, you know, feel seen. You may feel overlooked. You may not always be the chosen one by people, but God says you are a chosen generation. You are of a royal priesthood. And so you are set apart, and not just in here at New Birth Christian Center, but in your community, in your home, at your school, you know, among your friends. You stand out. You are set apart. And so don't dim. One of the things, too, is I had to get to a place where I had to stop dimming my light for other people. And so you don't want to ever get to that place where you dim your light for other people. 
Um, you guys had mentioned, we've been talking about character strengths. And if you look at the picture, I don't know if you can see because the wording is small. But um, one of my character strengths, I meant, I'll mention my character strength, is advocate. And the quote that I put up there was, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others by Dr. Martin Luther King? Sister Fields, she says her character strength is integrity. Integrity, what that means is when nobody, what you're doing when nobody is watching. Integrity, being true to who you are. Education is the passport to future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare it for today, Malcolm X. And then you have Romney Sears. He said, my character strength is this, creativity. I want to help foster an atmosphere where our youth are comfortable worshiping God and draw, drawing after you. After, I don't see that. I cannot see that word. Drawing other youth and through creative means and not feel needed um, or what does that say? Rejected for exploring and expressing the gifts God have or gave them. Miss Letitia, she says this, my character strength, her character strength is this, originality. Life doesn't get easier or more forgiven, but we get stronger and more resilient. We get stronger and more resilient. We don't stop. And then Theo Book says this, his character strength is emotional intelligence. I have not failed 10,000 times. I've successfully found 10,000 ways that will not work, Thomas Edison. Character strengths. What's your character strength? I remember when we were over in the other room and you all began to declare some of your character strengths. Some of you said intelligent. Some of you said respectful. Um, some of you said, what were some other things you all said? Responsible. That's a character strength strong and creativity. And then I, I remember Amaya, she said caring. And one of the things I had mentioned to her, because I'm a caring person too, sometimes we can care about things too much. And so it's just knowing when to let some of those things go and, you know, but, um, caring, responsible. These are all the things that make up who you are. And so, when you go to school and you're faced with temptations or the pressures of life or influences, remember who you are. You are a light on those school campuses and don't let anyone tell you any different. And what you need to do, it, one of the things you can do, like I said, affirmation, positive affirmations, and then not only that, in addition to that, beginning to declare the promises of God over your life that you are, I said, a chosen generation. That, that's the word. That's not me. I set you apart. God has set you all, each of you apart. You're fearfully and you're wonderfully made. So with that being said, what I'm going to do is... I had mentioned one of the things I had said was inviting God back into um, God, inviting God back into my personal space. And um, when I begin to invite God back into my personal space, it's like things really begin to change for me. Um, the light kind of came on a little bit. And so maybe... You have, um, you know God. I'm talking to the youth on this morning, but, you know, I'm encouraging them. But maybe you do know God, um, but you need to get to a place where you need to invite him back into your personal space. Or maybe you haven't invited God into your personal space at all. And so what I want to do right now is give you all that opportunity to first, to those who have not invited God ever into your personal space, and maybe you haven't invited him into your heart, I want to open up this time, the opportunity for you to do so. And so, 
is there anyone in here that do not or have not received the Lord into your heart? So what we're going to do is we're just going to stand because I don't want anyone to feel embarrassed. And so we'll just repeat after you'll repeat after me. And this is for this prayer is for anyone who has not invited God into your ever into your personal space. But you want to take make that commitment on today. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus. I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you are Lord and I believe you died for my sins and I believe you rose from the dead. I repent of my sins and I invite you to come into my heart. In Jesus name, amen. Now, if you have received the Lord into your heart, just go ahead and worship him in this moment. Amen. And to those who, you know, maybe you need to invite God back into your personal space. I know God, but, you know, I want to invite him back into my personal space. I want to make that commitment today as well. If that's you, what we're going to do right now is we're going to have our solid team. Um, we'll all just have you to come to come up to the front. And you can just feel the altar right here, all of you. Because we want to pray for you. And we want you to be encouraged. And we want you to be reminded and made aware of who you are. So when you go into the school campuses or wherever your whereabouts may be, that you are reminded and you are aware um, of who you are. Okay? So you can face me. Okay? All right. All right. So we're going to just pray over you, okay? All right. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for our youth. God, we thank you, Father, because they are your chosen people. God, you have called them out of darkness and into this marvelous light. You called them to be set apart. And God, we thank you right now that you're using them for your glory. God, I thank you that they're walking in confidence, that they're walking in strength. God, that they're not ashamed, that they are bold. They are mighty in you. I thank you, Father God, for filling their hearts, their minds with your peace, with your love, God, with your joy. God, even the things they don't talk about, God, I thank you for encouraging our youth. The things that they've been exposed to and that they've seen that they shouldn't have seen, God, I thank you for keeping their minds. God, I thank you, God, for reminding them that they are smart. They are intelligent. They are yours. They are loved, and they're loved perfectly. I thank you, Father touching their hearts, going into their secret places. I thank you, Father, for personal relationships with you, God, that they're growing in you, that they're growing in their community, that they're growing in their school, in their character. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. The things that they don't talk about, God, I thank you. The things that no one knows about. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Encourage our youth. God, I thank you that your joy is their strength. I thank you that you're filling them with laughter. God, I thank you that you're filling them with your spirit in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. They are unique. They're different. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for a yes 
in their hearts, a yes in their spirits, oh God. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you. Even where they don't understand, God, who they are or who you are, God, I thank you for making them aware. Thank you for awareness of who they are and who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. I thank you for life. God, I ask that you encourage their hearts in the name of Jesus. Encourage their hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let them know they don't have to be perfect, oh God. You made them and you didn't make no mistakes. You love them regardless. You love them. You love them, Lord Jesus. With an everlasting love. Thank you, Jesus. A love that never runs out. When others may have walked away, friends may have turned away, God, you still are there because that's who you are. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father, for being a friend to them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Thank you Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, that they are salt, that they are light. God, they are that, like that hill or that city that sits on a hill that can't be hidden. They're set apart. They're set apart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Young people, can we just take a few moments just to worship real quick, if that's okay? That's cool. But can I teach you all something real quick? Let's do this. Lift up your hands real quick. And out of your mouth, you know how you have your favorite football team and you're like, yeah, yeah, cool, man. Oh, I love that team. You all love Jesus? Can you utter it out your mouth? Just say, Jesus, I love you. And just keep talking to him. Just talk to him just for a little bit. Just say you love him, how much you appreciate him. Just say, man, Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. Father, you're amazing. Hallelujah. Just talk to him just for a little bit. He loves hearing from you. He loves hearing from you. And he longs to hear from you. At times he's like, man, I want Jeremiah just to talk to me. I want to talk to Jeremiah too. I want to talk to Anaya. Know that everything is going to be okay. Know that everything is going to be all right. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Y'all can clap it up. Okay, one thing. Y'all got to help me with one thing. On the count of three, can y'all say Jesus Christ really loud? I learned this from this dude named Mike Servin, and I think it was really cool. Y'all know who I'm talking about. One, two, three. Jesus Christ! <laughs> y'all can go back to y'all seats. Hey, Amen. We thank God for the word. We thank God again for our, our bishop and Pastor L, and actually our... Bishop is here, and we're just going to ask him just to come and have last words, uh, along with Pastor L, to come and have words. I know we're getting ready to close, but while the young people were up there, and I need y'all to listen to me and settle down, we've had an amazing service. Um, as I was laying hands on different one of you, um, what I saw was 
some of you are in life and you, you're just, um, you're a spectator. Some things happen in your life and you don't control it because you're not the adult or you're not, you know, there's some things go on. And what I saw was a lot of anger and a lot of brokenness. If that's you, I'm just going to take about five minutes. If you feel like, God, I'm angry or my heart's been broke about this. Yes, Lord. I want you to come just real fast. Yes, Lord. I don't, if you don't come up here to play. Yeah. And if you don't want God to do something for your heart, yes, Lord. don't come. Don't come because everybody else is coming. But if there's something in you, because we serve a God that heals the brokenness in our lives. And you think that nobody even hears you, Christian, or nobody even cares. Sometimes life can be mean or cruel or sometimes life can happen. Does it seem like stuff happened that you didn't even do it, but you're subject to it and you're just mad about it. It ain't even your fault. And the Lord told me to tell you this, that he wants to heal you. He wants to heal you for you, but then you become that light to let other young people know that you can live a long time and that it's okay. But God doesn't want you going around feeling heavy and going in your room. I see some of you laying in your room kind of reading through books or trying to, you're trying to work it out. Come on. But you just can't figure out how to do it. Yes, and you yes. don't think anybody really hears you. You, you speak, but They don't really hear what you're saying. I heard the Lord say that he wants to heal that brokenness in yes, you. Yes, and yes. if you just line up across yes, the front, I need, yes. I need Romney and I need, um, yes. I need, um, Theo, if you can come, just line up. We're just getting ready to pray, Pastor, and then I'm going to give you that. But I just couldn't go home I, because the youth service is amazing. And the word um, Minister Rachel was talking about identity. And what begins to happen is, is, have you ever heard of the word identity theft? And it is the unauthorized um, interest or coming into and taking um, of who you are. And what life or the enemy has tried to do is steal your identity by some of the stuff that you're going on. Some of you, you've heard things. Some of you, you've experienced things. Some of you, things have been done and you watch things. You watch mom and dad. You watch people in school. And all of a sudden, it makes you feel like you're shrinking. And you become this angry person that you don't, you know, you're that nice young person that you were. All of a sudden, life has stole your, stolen your identity. And that's not who God, because you're angry and because you're hurt. And I'm just here to tell you, I'm taking five minutes and I'm going to let you go because it's not even my service. I'm just popping in. But I know what God told me. Because God is concerned, as much as he's concerned about a youth service, he's concerned about Christian. He's concerned about Jeremiah. He's concerned about all the different things that go on. God is concerned. Come on, come on up. Come on up. We're getting ready to pray. And if we if we are live, can we if it's okay, we're going to we're going to go off. We're still live. I love you all. Thank you all for coming and being in your live seats. Well, right now we're getting ready to, to, to pray a blessing on some of these young folks. And we're getting ready to give them the privacy that need, need, they need to bring healing to their lives and their homes. What I want to encourage you to do, those of you on the other side of the camera, is come on out when we come out to the services. Because as amazing as it is sitting in your living room, there is something when you approach Jesus, like the woman with the issue, that when you make the effort and you press through the crowd and the tiredness and the inconvenience and you get at the feet of Jesus with other believers. Watch what he does for you. We love you. Thank you God for loves us you. Here Show them the love of the stream at New Birth Christian Center. It is our hope and prayer that this is an exciting, anointed, and revitalizing worship experience for you. When you are able, please be sure to visit us in person at New Birth Christian Center, located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard in the beautiful city of Stockton, California. You can also visit us online through Facebook and our website, newbirthstockton.com. Please be sure to like, comment, and share this video with your friends and family all over the globe. Stay connected to us because with your prayer and support, we can take this wonderful gospel from the neighborhood to the nations.